Hey guys, it's Dawn, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're wondering why I'm filming in front of this horribly boring and blank wall, this is what happens when you have to adapt your filming schedule to the whims of your child. So it's morning right now, it's like 8 o'clock, and the sun is coming in from one of the windows in the loft and like shining right on my bookcase. So that was not working, so I'm sorry that you get a boring background today, but this was the best lighting I could figure out this time of day. Clearly, I need to get like an umbrella light or something, but anyways, <laughs> I'm here. So as you can tell from the title of today's video, I am going to be doing a spoiler-free brief book review of 12 by Jasper Kent. The reason I picked up 12 was definitely just that the premise grabbed me, intrigued me. I really, really wanted to read this book because in short, it is a vampire hunting novel set in Russia during the invasion of Napoleon. I know, it's the most random thing I've ever picked up, but I was really excited to read it because obviously you guys know I love Russia, all things Russia. So vampire hunting in Russia with Napoleon invading and soldiers fighting each other and shenanigans just seemed exciting to me. So yeah. So our main character is Captain Alexei Ivanovich Danilov, who is a Russian officer he works with three other Russian officers who are part of like this secret undercover little task force thing that works in mainly sabotage and things like that. So at the beginning of the story, it's kind of setting up that Napoleon is invading, Russia's not doing very well, and so they're getting kind of desperate. And that desperation leads one of the members of the group, Dmitri, to offer to the group a solution. So he says he knows a group of very mysterious and crazy fighters from Transylvania. Um, he says they're from Wallachia, which is a region where Transylvania kind of is. Kind of is. So they don't outright say Transylvania because they don't want to be too, or the author doesn't want to be too on the nose. But yeah, they're from Wallachia. They're from Transylvania. So you can kind of guess where this is going but the rest of the group agrees and they summon summon this group of fighters to the front to kind of help them fight the french so the beginning of the book is them just kind of like observing the fighters and realizing wow they're really powerful how do they do all this shenanigans shenanigans and of course eventually our our main character captain alexei what's his face finds out that they're vampires who would have saw that coming but yeah, it was a really cool premise. I, I liked the plot a lot, but that was the problem. I liked the plot. But let me talk about Mr. Captain Alexei Ivanovich Danilov because I have some strong feelings about this man. So first of all, this novel is written in first person. So we are being told the story by Alexei. It works most of the time, however, the author decided to give Alexei kind of this rambling philosophical style, which I think was trying to mimic like the great Russian literature of the time, which I mean, it's, it's, it's a good choice, I guess, if you're trying to be really authentic, but in an action packed vampire novel, I'm not personally sure that it works very well because, okay, here's an example. You know, you have a chapter that's leading up to a vampire fight. It ends with a cliffhanger, and then in the next chapter, Alex says, like, let me ramble about a memory now, because you totally didn't want to know the resolution to this fight with the vampire. The rambling and the kind of existential crises that the character has works sometimes. Like, sometimes there's some really good thoughts he has, and it's very deep and profound. But other times, it interrupts the flow of the narrative, and other times it's sort of nonsensical like he was trying to be really deep and profound and it didn't quite come across so it just feels flowery and meaningless which I mean I guess that's true to life because sometimes we all personally have those moments where we think we've come up with this great brilliant idea and really it's a big fat nothing so authentic I guess but boring also yes <laughs> but that's not my main issue with Captain Danilov so <sighs> How do I put this? One of, I guess, the B plot line is a romance between him and a prostitute. Fine, I don't care. My issue is he has a wife and a son back home in St. Petersburg. A lot of this takes place in Moscow where this prostitute is. But he's got a wife and son at home, dutiful, faithful, supposedly he loves them. 
And yet the entire B plot of the story that's just like hammered into your head, every freaking chapter is how in love he is with this prostitute. Now I get it. This was super common back in the day or whatever, where wealthy or elite men could have these sort of relationships without consequence. It was just sort of socially acceptable. They kept it on the down low and it wasn't a big deal. But just personally, I don't like reading about it. I don't find it compelling. It makes me hate him as a character. It makes me not care about what happens to him because I'm mad at him the entire book. And also, just for me, okay, I like the vampire hunting plot line, you know, the main plot of the story, but I felt like it was this horrible abrasive interruption every time I'm reminded about his stupid mistress that I don't care about and I wish would just fall off a cliff. <sighs> I have some strong feelings about this. I really, I just, I have no patience and no sympathy for adultery in almost every case. My one exception that I think makes a compelling story is when it's the case of like an abusive relationship that someone can't escape and the the affair is their way of having some sort of happiness in their life like that's compelling but when it's just a douchebag sorry excuse my language when it's just this douchebag who has a nice wife and son waiting at home for him and he just wants to like romp around because he can i i don't have patience for that i don't like it it makes me hate the character so that is a huge issue if you're writing a novel if you create a character that people probably women specifically can't jive with because they're angry at him the entire book and they don't understand or relate to his motivations it makes it hard to be invested in the story just just my personal opinion i get that that's totally personal preference it isn't super objective but if you're like me and you don't enjoy reading about adultery or affairs or whatever yeah <laughs> this might not be one for you let me just read a an excerpt <laughs> that sums up the character's attitude throughout this entire book. And it, hopefully it'll illustrate just how infuriating and selfish he is. So he's kind of thinking about the vampires and how he doesn't want to die. And he says, um, I knew I did not want to die like that. And that knowledge made me realize that I did not want to die at all. I wanted to live and enjoy life. I wanted my wife and my son and my mistress and to have more children and dang it, more mistresses. This is a character. This is a person that is entirely focused on himself. He doesn't care about the people around them. Even if he does, it's only to the point of how they affect him. Like his mistress, he doesn't care about her as a person. He cares about her because she provides, you know, love and companionship in, in, in the, the battlefield or whatever. Like he values her because she's a tool. Same thing with his wife. She's a tool that gave him status and, um, you know, cemented his place in like the higher ups in St. Petersburg. Like he values her for that. He values his son because he's carrying on his name. Like he doesn't actually care about anybody. He only cares about himself and it's infuriating and it just makes you hate this character. And that's not good. You shouldn't hate the main character of a book. And I'm not sure if the author wanted that to be the case. Like he was trying to build like the anti-hero or whatever, but it, it wasn't to the point that I was like, oh, this character has flaws. And so they were relatable. It was, this character is awful. I, I don't want to read from his perspective anymore. And I really don't want to hear him talk about his mistress anymore and how hard he has it trying to balance his two lives. Oh, poor him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, it was the entire book and it started driving me insane and it distracted from what I was enjoying, which was the main like vampire hunting and battling kind of plot line. Just to make it clear, the vast majority of these little tabs I've put in the book are sections where he's talking about the mistress and makes me mad. So let me give you another example if I can find it. Here's a good one. This one, ooh, I had to put the book down for a couple minutes because I was so mad. So he's received a letter from his wife back home and in the letter, the wife says, oh, your son misses you. And this is his reaction to being told that his son misses him. Pretty normal thing to be told, right? He had been asking when I would be coming home. I resented being told that. I felt that Marfa was using our son to voice her own desires. Not that it was untrue that Dimitri wanted me home, nor was it unreasonable that Marfa did as well. I just resented the way that she impinged on my desire to have it all. 
Strange that I resented only Marfa, not Dmitri, but then I did not have a rival son here in Moscow. Ooh! I hate this man so much. And you know the most infuriating thing about all of this? It would be fine if he had some sort of character growth and development throughout the story, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He's still the same dirtbag at the end that he was at the beginning, and it makes me so mad. He has not changed at all. He has not changed for the worse or for the better. He's the same, the, the same Joe Schmo, the one I didn't like, so I don't know what to do with that. And that's why it makes me so sad, because I feel like just the premise of this story had so much potential. I was so intrigued. I really did enjoy the main story. I was invested. I finished this book. I was not tempted to DNF just because of the horrible B plot line. However, it really did distract me from the story. It made it, it made it hard to feel fully immersed and enjoy every second of the story because every other chapter I'm being pulled out and just irritated by this plot line. Also, I hated the ending. I can't say anything specific about it. I just feel like it wasn't satisfying, it it didn't change the character in any meaningful way, it was a cheap cop-out, I don't know. I, I won't say any more about that because I don't want to spoil it in case you want to read this book, but yeah, that ending was really disappointing. Not not like the climax, the climax was interesting, but the actual like resolution with the character, I was just not impressed. Anyways, just to sum up this review, this book was enjoyable. I liked reading it. I was interested in it. However, there were some huge glaring things that made it hard for me as a reader to enjoy the entire experience. And for that reason, I would give it a three out of five. I could only recommend this book to people who are specifically into historical fiction that is like paranormal. So, you know, vampire hunting, werewolves, that kind of stuff if you're interested in that, or if you specifically like any type of fantasy that is either set in Russia or like a, um, a fake type of Russia, something copying Russia, whatever. If, if you fit into the niche that this writer wrote for, then you might enjoy this novel, but I can't recommend it to anyone other than that very small specific group because it just, it doesn't have enough going on for it to be just a, an objectively enjoyable fantasy novel. I'm not sure if that makes sense. I hope it does. But yeah, I just I can only recommend it if you know, you're sitting here and you're like, wow, that premise sounds super interesting. That's right up my alley. You might enjoy it if you're like, eh, pass. Don't read it. Don't bother. It will just, it'll, it'll hurt your soul. It'll hurt your soul. And I don't want to do that. To you. <laughs> anyway, I will be picking up the sequel because my library has the sequel as a physical copy. Um, but at the first mention of his freaking mistress, I am going to throw it against the wall. Just, just putting that out there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't get too mad and too emotional about the freaking affair B plotline that I hated. But yeah, hope it was informative. Hope it was helpful. Helped you decide whether or not you want to read this book. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more book reviews and more writing related content from me, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Well, I hope you guys have an amazing week. And as always, happy reading. Bye.